welcome to the National Science Week edition of The Laboratory. My name is Erin Wagan. And I'm Sarah Nagoka. And we have a most exciting evening for you all. We're being hosted by the wonderful St Michael's Uniting Church and have invited back some of our best storytellers from the past three years to peel back further layers from this gobstopper of science. Um, we've added projection art by the wonderful Robert Jordan and we have a number of other surprises, including our very own science choir, the Gaussian Ensemble. The theme for Science Week this year is light. And so it is without further ado that we welcome you to the electromagnetic spectrum. <laughs> All the visible and non-visible light measured by wavelength. We are now occupying but a very small portion of that spectrum, that of visible light. At the front row here, in this lurid, mustard khaki colour, you're sitting about 570 nanometres of light. Whereas the cheap seats up the back, <laughs> slightly shorter wavelength, 495 nanometres. If you were waving from the red part of the organ at the very top, we'd allow you a longer, slower wavelength of 750 nanometres. Very royal. Very... Of course, the spectrum continues. Out near the entrance doors, you'll be bathed, the, the green would go into a cool blue light before skipping to the ultraviolet of Chinatown. Things, get, things then get increasingly dangerous as you get to the ionising radiation. X-rays reside anywhere from Northern Hospital, from Royal Melbourne Hospital up to the Northern Hospital and beyond, with a wavelength one thousandth of that in this room. And beyond that, the wavelength decreases by a thousandth again to the deadly gamma radiation near Sydney. <laughs> Needless to say, don't go to Queensland. Now, some of the, <laughs> some of the astute people in the room will realise that um, that is actually south, not north. <laughs> Ignore that. Assume the church has been rotated. Um, we'll continue. Stretching out past the organ, we would enter the infrared of Fed Square and radar waves searching through botanical, the botanical gardens and the microwaves at about a centimetre in length, bathing those along St Kilda Beach. Beyond that, the wavelength increases dramatically to the long, drawling, slow, kilometre length wavelength of AM radio. So that about covers everything, and we can go home. <laughs> anyway, the stories tonight will span um, this spectrum of light and also other aspects of light. Um, but let's just talk very briefly about the actual act of seeing for a moment, about eyes. So if we take a journey deep into the ocean, we find the Wanawit, a very small, newly discovered, single-cell sea creature. And this single cell sea creature has made for itself, or of itself, what is essentially a floating eyeball, complete with retina, cornea, and lens. Keep in mind, single cell. Studying this creature has proven di difficult because it rapidly disintegrates when taken out of seawater, which suggests it should probably start working on an eyelid. <laughs> From the most simple to the most complex, the ocean is also home to the astounding mantis shrimp, who possesses perhaps the most complex of all visual systems. How to put this? The entirety of human colour vision is made possible by receptors of only three different colours embedded on our retinas, red, blue and green. The mantis shrimp has not three different coloured receptors, but 16. Think of their vision as walking through Times Square, wearing 90s tie-dye, at the bottom of a rainbow with 3D glasses, licking a rainbow paddle pop and on hallucinogens. <laughs> Quite jealous of this mantis shrimp was Neil Harbison. Born colourblind, Neil was determined to sense colour regardless, which he achieved, as you do, by implanting an antenna on his skull that would conduct vibrations of different frequencies directly into his inner ears. Now, instead of seeing a world in grayscale, Harbison, who considers, considers himself a cyborg, uses his aptly named 
Eyeborg to actually hear colours. Not requiring technological augmentation are our five incredible speakers this evening. <laughs> Deakin Research Fellow, Dr George Aranda. Obstetrics and Gynaecology Registrar, Dr Theresa MacDonald. Theoretic, theoretical Cosmologist, Dr Katie Mack. Trainee Pathologist and Pathology Lecturer, Dr Claire Hampson. And Theoretical Particle Physicist, Dr Chris Lassig. Now, if you've been to Laboratory before, you know the drill, five speakers, five stories. Tonight in this venue, we won't be having our usual intermission. Instead, the science choir will be entertaining us. Feel free to get up and dance if your legs need it. The words are in, written in your program. <laughs> 